going to be Thunderheart. Thunderheart too strong on the front end, and Thunderheart wins it by two. Lansdowne was second. Photo for third to Bodacious in front of Franklin One Star, and Mendez Mile finished fifth. They're in the gate. And they're off. Hot Rod Mama and Del Mar Woman vying for the lead. Midnight Silence rushes up in between those two. Jacqueline Cochran is down at the rail. On the far outside, American Conquest caught almost five wide into the turn, and the distant early trailer is tapped in nine. Heading to the six furlong pole, and Del Mar Woman asserts herself and takes a narrow lead, but she has plenty of company. They swarm right in. Midnight Silence now puts her head in front, and it's Midnight Silence with a narrow advantage onto the back stretch. Hot Rod Mama up alongside second, followed by American Conquest. Delmar Woman subtly back to fourth. Jacqueline Cochran racing in between rivals, a long way back to tap in nine with four and a half furlongs to go. And Hot Rod Mama now in front, leads the way by about a neck. At the rail, Midnight Silence in second. It's a length and a half to Jacqueline Cochran, a joint third inside American Conquest. Delmar Woman losing ground, eight in front of Tap in nine. They have three furlongs to run. Hot Rod Mama working hard to maintain the lead, has it by about a neck still. Midnight Silence fighting on at the rail. Three more back to Jacqueline Cochran in third. And then American Conquest, they're a quarter of a mile from home. Midnight Silence, Hot Rod Mama. Hot Rod Mama on the outside. Midnight Silence hugs the rail. They've been battling for quite some time with a furlong left to go. Hot Rod Mama has the lead. Midnight Silence at the rail. Four back to Jacqueline Cochran in third. There are 16th out. And now Hot Rod Mama finishes up the job and pulls away. Hot Rod Mama wins it by three lengths. Midnight Silence second. Jacqueline Cochran and... American Conquest. Miss Polo Bar. They're in the gate. And they're off. Pretty Rena, Elegance Code came out alertly, but is now toward the back of the field. Here's Paid in Gold moving up in between horses, and Paid in Gold battling with Pretty Rena. Pretty Rena is faster. Soul of a Warrior is down at the rail, taking second. Then it's Miss Polo Bar fourth, four lengths off the lead, racing three clear of Irish Patsy. Precipice is next, a gap of four, back to Elegance Code, and a distance to Crescendo Molto. Strung out into the far turn, behind Pretty Rena, who has a two-length lead. Soul of a Warrior, a comfortable second. It's two more lengths then to Miss Polo Bar in third. Now here's Irish Patsy in the orange, making a little bit of headway fourth, four lengths off the lead. Precipice is next with a quarter of a mile to go, and Pretty Rena still to catch. It's Pretty Rena, lead diminishing. Soul of a Warrior in second. Steady progress for Irish Patsy. Precipice comes alive on the far outside and is coming with a nice bit as Irish Patsy spurts away. Irish Patsy, three-length lead, paid in gold. Precipice on the outside. It will be Irish Patsy. Irish Patsy wins it by two and a half. Very close photo for second between Precipice and paid in gold. Behind them, Soul of a Warrior and Elegance Code. And they're off. Quick Like a Bunny is going to the front. The Rain Song has some speed, too. And they're joined by Daddy Classy Dill coming through at the rail. Now Pequena Tormenta is faster than all of them. And Pequena Tormenta 
takes over onto the main track, gets over to the rail and leads three quarters of a length. Quick like a bunny backs off. Awesome Taylor and Madeira move up second and third respectively. Then it's quick like a bunny and the rain song right together. Two in front of Daddy Classy Dill and Miss K-Line at the back of the field. Pequena Tormenta passes the half mile pole leading the way by a little more than a length. Awesome Taylor second by the same margin. Madeira in third. Then the rain song, quick like a bunny, too clear of Daddy Classy Dell and Miss Kaline. Three eights to go. Pequena Tormenta doing it easily thus far. Pursued by Awesome Taylor, a length and a half behind second. Another two back to Madeira third. The others are far back. They turn for home, and it's Pequena Tormenta. Pequena Tormenta opens it up now to lead it by four lengths coming to the eighth pole. Awesome Taylor clearly second. Madero on the outside in third, trying to make it close for second, but a no doubt about it victory for Pequena Tormenta, who turns it on through the stretch to romp, widening with every stride, getting close to a nine or 10 length victory. Awesome Taylor holds second, Madero third. Then it was the rain song and Daddy Classy Dill. They're in the gate. And they're off. Johnny Paycheck went to his knees at the start. Stan from Malibu is going to battle with Workday for the lead. Silent Heat sits three lengths behind them in third. Then it's B punctual on the inside of Johnny Paycheck. Into the first turn, and Stan from Malibu sets the pace, leads the way, trying to drift out just a touch, but has it by a length and a half. Workday is in second. Be punctual at the rails. Silent Heat in between. And Johnny Paycheck joins them three wide. And now just a couple of lengths off the lead being set by Stan from Malibu. It's Stan from Malibu in front by a length. Workday is in second. Be punctual is eager. Nowhere to go at this stage. He's down on the inside. And in the center of the course, Johnny Paycheck with Silent Heat between those two. Less than a half mile from home. Stan from Malibu. Gets pressed by Workday, who's right up alongside in second. Johnny Paycheck now makes his move, and Johnny Paycheck goes to second as Workday takes the lead. Stan from Malibu is dropping out of it. Johnny Paycheck on the outside, and Workday arrive at the top of the stretch, one, two. Three lengths back to Silent Heat in third, then B punctual. They're at the top of the stretch. Johnny Paycheck and Workday. Workday not done, fighting back bravely on the inside of Johnny Paycheck who's running a giant race considering the start. It is Workday, however, with a two-length lead. Be punctual, finishing nicely in the center of the course. Workday, Workday wins it by about two and a half. Be punctual, Johnny Paycheck in Silent Heat. They're in the gate. And they're off. Sweet Hello is going out for the early lead. Anna Carava at the rail. Miss Joe's Candy in between them. Conceal and Carrie is down at the rail. Followed by Compton's House fifth. Five lengths off the lead and another four to Prestigious. They're sprinting quickly toward the six furlong mark, and it's Sweet Hello, clearing off now to lead it by about three lengths. Conceal and carry now moves a joint second on the inside of Anna Carava. That didn't get too comfortable. And now finding a little breathing room in between to take that second spot. It's a gap of five to the next flight, headed by Compton's house, racing on the inside of Miss Joe's Candy, and the distant trailer is prestigious. They have about a half mile left to go. And it's Sweet Hello showing the way. Sweet Hello has it by a length. 
Conceal and carry on length and a half back now in second and being pushed along. Another three back to Ana Carave in third. Then Compton's house fourth, followed by Miss Joe's Candy and nothing yet from Prestigious. They have passed a three-eighth pole and Sweet Hello is trying to say goodbye. And it's Sweet Hello in front by six lengths, widening with every stride. Conceal and Carry could not keep pace, but is five clear of the rest. Top of the lane and Sweet Hello by double digits. Conceal and Carry second by seven, followed by Anna Carava third. Prestigious trying to get a piece of it, moving up on the outside into the third spot. Sweet Hello by a pole under Umberto Rispoli. Sweet Hello canters in by many. Gets close for second, very close indeed prestigious on the outside of Conceal and Carry, and then Ana Carava. They're in the gate. And they're off. Boss Sully breaks out beautifully and goes straight to the front. Tom and Jazzy, Catalina Eddy comes away in third. Then it's Old Pal fourth in the early going. Upward mobility and Thirsty Pappy at the back of a compact group. Boss Sully into the first turn leads the way with Catalina Eddy in second. Just behind them, Tom and Jazzy is a little eager in third. An Old Pal comfortably placed in fourth, three lengths off the pacemaker. Thirsty Pappy inside of him and upward mobility at the back. They swing on to the back stretch with Boss Sully leading the way three parts of a length. Catalina Eddy is in second, followed by Tom and Jazzy and Old Pal now right together third and fourth. Another length and a half to Thirsty Pappy and upward mobility. Boss Sully is the clear cut leader with a half mile left to run, bounding along with a length and a half advantage. Catalina Eddy second, then Tom and Jazzy, Old Pal. Old Pal now takes third, coming after the leader with a three-wide bid. At the rail, Tom and Jazzy not done. He's fighting on. Two more back to Thirsty Pappy and Upward Mobility. It's Boss Sully, the leader, has it a half length. Old Pal coming with a three-wide bid. Catalina Eddy in the red. They're at the top of the stretch. And Old Pal and Catalina Eddy. It's Catalina Eddy just in front, down on the inside. Boss Sully not done. He's a tough customer and being handwritten. These two nose and nose to the wire. Boss Sully or Catalina Eddy. Catalina Eddy on the outside gets him late. Catalina Eddy. A very confident half length or so. Boss Sully second. Old Pal didn't quicken. Then Tom and Jazzy. Afternoon heat. And they're off to a smooth start. My Dominator, Afternoon Heat, both have some early interest, but it's a whole host of pursuers, including Octopus in the yellow, who's now quickest of them all. Down at the rail, Awesome Heights is coming through to challenge. My Harbor's Dream is racing in between those two. Those three have now pulled about a length and a half clear as they run past a half mile pole. Then comes My Dominator in fourth, followed by Afternoon Heat in fifth. At the rail, Vicente Shadow, Midnight Special is next. Cross Examine trying to make some headway along the inside. Mighty Matt is wide. Dropping back now is Midnight Special toward the back of the field and Street Vision trails. Octopus the leader with a quarter of a mile to go. My Harbor's Dream at the rail, three quarters back second. It's four more to afternoon heat. Awesome Heights is down at the rail. They're coming to the furlong pole, and it's Octopus and My Harbor's Dream head-to-head. -head. Octopus on the outside, My Harbor's Dream coming through along the rail. They'll hit the wire together. Octopus or My Harbor's Dream. Octopus just in front, and Octopus prevails in a long drive over My Harbor's Dream. Vicente Shadow third, followed by afternoon heat, and cross-examine completes the super high five.
done with cold craft brews right on the trackside apron during live racing. up to take the lead and dialing Scotty makes the lead very comfortably my gals Don and Laurie on the outside take second followed by Bella baby in third they're followed by Miss Joni and then Miss Lizzie racing in fifth five or six lengths off the pacemaker whirly girly is next on the outside of California bling and map to my heart at the back of the field it's dialing Scotty in control around the far turn Cruising with a two-length lead. My gals, Don and Lori, now cuts into the margin second. Followed by Miss Joni and Bella Baby right together, third and fourth. And then Miss Lizzie, fifth, just waiting for room, angling to the outside now with four lengths to make up. They're at the top of the stretch. Dialing Scotty confronted and passed by my gals, Don and Lori, on the extreme outside. Here comes Miss Lizzie now, and in between them, Bella Baby. It's a driving finish. Miss Lizzie with solid momentum on the outside, coming to get it all. And it will be Miss Lizzie, another for Reese Bully, winning it going away. My gals, Don and Lori, was second. Then it was Bella Baby third, followed by Miss Joni and California Bling.
If you've made money playing the races this year, how much money have you made? If you told me $40,000, i would be impressed, right? That's basically $10,000 a month. That's a good wage. If you told me you made $80,000 so far this year, I'd be even more impressed. That's $20,000 a month. That's real, that's real income, a lot more than most people make. If you told me $120,000 for the year so far, well, obviously you had a big, big score or two, but that would be close to $30,000 a month. You know what our seminar guest today? He made $950,000 so far this year in three days in Las Vegas. He's the NHC champ. He's visiting us from Kansas City, Missouri. His name, Paul Kalia. Paul, welcome to the seminar. Happy Saturday and welcome to uh, Santa Anita as well. Thank you. It's, it's great to be here. I, I, Santa Anita is such a beautiful <laughs> place. Everyone should come here. And I just, it's so beautiful. I've been taking videos of the track and sending it to my friends this morning. And it's, it's just, it's awesome. Well, you haven't been here since 2008 when Ravens Pass won the Breeder right, Cup Classic. Right. Hard to believe that's 15 years ago, but you got a few more bucks in your pocket today. Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So, Does it feel like a dream? It's I wasn't planning on winning or anything like that. You know, you just, you don't, you just, you know, you want to just pick some winners and sure. and not embarrass yourself. Try to hit one of the, the money spots. That's, that's what you try. You just try to hit, you know, at the bottom of them, it doesn't matter. Just hit one of the spots because it's, because everybody there is so good just to hit any of the money spots is good. Trust me. It's good just to hit any of them. Now you just didn't hit one money spot. You hit two money spots. You finished yes. fourth and fifth, which is how you got the $950,000. You got 800,000. First, first, first and fourth. I'm sorry. Yeah, first, first don't want to cheat you out of a spot. <laughs> 800,000 for first and right. $150,000 for fourth correct what was your strategy obviously you played at a higher level than most of the players there in the tournament what was your strategy with the two entries were you planning to basically play the same uh you know same picks all along up until the end yes yeah, that, that was one of the, the the um i was i played friday basically like a pick and pray which you know you know people your people are playing odds and i i was having trouble finding you know a lot of plays so i just so i found some of my plays and i put them in a couple hours before you even knew what the odds were did you go to you the know? pool or did you go and to that, the no no i you know put them in on the machines you oh, know what i mean yeah, yeah, so yeah. post i'm still two hours away i just wanted to get okay so i have you know five or six or seven you know plays out of the out of the 16 that you have to play you'll have eight eight or ten mandatory than eight you know other whatever you want sure, to do sure. so and i was i was struggling trying to find you know 16 plays you think oh that'd be easy to find it's not with that. all those tracks on friday you know yeah. it was it was kind of yeah it was um it's it's you know it's a lot of work you, you know you have to go through all of these different tracks looking for something that you you like and you know sometimes you don't see anything you like and that's that's the problem you mentioned pick and pray paul and i believe you qualified at hearsttourneys.com how much did you pay in order to qualify to get in the big dance roughly was it a couple hundred bucks was it a couple thousand bucks the one that i qualified in or all together <laughs> let's let's say all together just to put it realistically oh five thousand it'd be less than that it would be um because basically after you know after i qualified you know twice you know i didn't i wasn't really playing in a lot of contests i try, I try to pick um because the contests usually have three or four tracks you know three or four races at each track you know it, it's very difficult because you're you know you're trying to handicap all these different tracks from all over the country different track surfaces you know sloppy here you know nice weather there and so it's 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 a, there's a lot to look at and i try to look whenever they have contests with my favorite tracks in there so i know that you know whatever 20 percent of the races are at one of my favorite tracks sure, so sure. i'll play that you know sure. and um and stuff like that but I probably the year that I didn't qualify, I easily spent five thousand trying to you know because they're either seventy five on Friday, one hundred sixty five, and and then when it gets closer to um, tournament time, they'll have bigger ones with lower odds, and better chances yes, to qualify. Better they're, ratios. they're like five hundred, you know. So I'm playing in the five hundred. You know, you can you can burn through some cash pretty pretty quick, you know. And I was now the story goes, Paul, that you drove from Kansas City to Las Vegas. You didn't hop on a modern invention called an airplane, but you basically <laughs> drove from Kansas City Correct. to Las Vegas to play in the NHC. And your goal was not only to not embarrass yourself but also to basically make enough money to fund the trip in other words the gas the hotel that's, that's that was the number one <laughs> I, you know because my buddy joined me too it's like you know if i could just make five or ten grand you know we'll sure you know we'll make a couple thousand a piece and sure. you know money to, to drink with in vegas you know <laughs> everything's great you know gas money back home hotel rooms you know because you can't drive it one way so you don't just stop in new mexico and, right and you know now, did any any uh, ladies of the night happen to rub your shoulder uh, afterwards? Did word get out, and did they uh, did, did they become your best friend? Uh, there was one. I was, I was sitting to one, one of my friends at the bar, and there was one sitting next to me. Does she you know, know who you were? What no. the, uh, no? <laughs> no, Imagine no, if she no, did. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you know, it was, it was a you know it was a Christian weekend. Yeah. <laughs> from Kansas City. We know you got a good football team. You yes. guys going to repeat as Super Bowl champs? <laughs> I the, the the general manager for Kansas City is just you know he's smart he doesn't get rid of his draft picks and so you, you know you want to get as many 
um, players on those rookie contracts as possible. Those yes. are teams that are going to be good. The more starters you have on rookie contracts, you keep your draft picks, you're, you'll sustain longer. But um, you know, repeating is, is extremely difficult. And um, so, I mean, they have, they have a chance, but, you know, there's a, you know, the you know Joe Burrow and Cincinnati is a really good team. You know, then there's all the, there's so many good quarterbacks in the AFC. So I would say it's going to be hard. And know? the NFL draft is coming up this Thursday. It's going to be your hometown as well. So a Correct. lot of activity in Kansas City. Correct. Paul, I've got see you got the racing form in front of you, and of course you did the homework for today's card, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But when you crack open a uh, a fresh form and take a look at it, what style of handicapper are you? Obviously, that's the big question that everybody's asking themselves watching. Why are you so good, and so many of us are not? Um, I, wow, I, there's a lot of people that are very good and, and way better than me. That's the first thing. But uh, normally what, what I do is like, you know, the entries for Saturdays, I'm usually a weekend player. So the entries come out on Wednesday. So I start going through looking for the type of races that I, I like, you know, so I'm looking what for, are those races? I like anything on the dirt. So I like six furlong sprints, you know, I like bang up claimers going six furlongs. So that's one of my favorite things like, um, excellent horses going a mile and eighth on the dirt that those are those are probably my two favorite things so i'm looking you don't see a lot of you know mile and eighth dirt races you know and um so i'm looking for stuff like that i'm not i'm not that great with turf sprints it's probably my achilles heel is, is turf sprints and um i like long on the on the grass that you know stuff like that you know love that and um so that's so i look through the entries and if i see a lot of you know stuff that um i'm not the um a lot of those one turn mile races aren't really my cup of tea either you know so i'd rather just go mile and eighth than, than go one turn mile just run around the, the track you know that's i prefer to run around the track so there's not many racetracks close to kansas city how'd you cut your teeth how'd you get introduced to this crazy game of ours was it your parents was it your friends <laughs> yeah my dad used to take me up to up to fauna park when i was a little kid i couldn't wait you know, fauna runs like you know nebraska's cold and uh, it's in grand island nebraska and um, so it opened up like the end of February, <laughs> and it started running like February and, and February and March, and then it, it was like the it was like the 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 the, the starter for the Axerman meet that was in the summer, you know. So the horses would, would you know get in shape there, you know, the, before the Axerman um, meet opened up in the summer. And um, yeah, we used to go up there. I, I was always so excited, you know, to, to go up there and um, got snowed in a few times and couldn't, couldn't get back home. But you know, that was, that's part of the that's part of the fun, you know. He's got a million dollar smile on his face. That's because he's got $950,000 in his pocket. We're going to find out who Paul Kalia likes on today's 10 race card here at the Great Race Place. But before we do any of that, let's toss the microphone over to track announcer Frank Miramide and get the minimal changes on today's spectacular card here at the Great Race Place. Welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast, the turf is firm, the rail is at zero feet on the turf course. Here are the changes. In the first, start of the early pick five, there are no changes. Race two begins the early pick four, scratch two, Benita Leona, and there is a revised morning line posted by oddsmaker John White. In the third race, number two, Reef City, two pounds over. The fourth has a program scratch of number five, Rock and Rye. In the fifth, the grade three Kona Gold, scratch two, Sunrise Journey. It does begin the pick six with just under $56,000 in the jackpot carryover. In the sixth race, no changes. Overweights in the seventh, number four, Midnight Susie, two over. Five, Tenacious Lady. Three pounds over. Late pick four starts with the seventh. The eighth is clear. In the ninth, the grade two Californian. Start of the golden hour pick four, no changes. Tenth race overweights, numbers one, five, and seven each carry two pounds over. Scratch number 13, Yogi Boy. Golden hour double begins with the finale. Enjoy your day at the Great Race Place. Back to Quigley's Corner. Tom's special guest today is Paul Kalia.
Welcome back. We're talking horses with Paul Kalia. He's the 2023 National Handicapping Championship champion. He won $950,000 competing last month at uh, the Horseshoe Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Not only did you win $950,000, Paul, to put in your pocket, but you also won a BCBC entry where you'll be participating here at the Great Race Place the first weekend in November. You also won an Eclipse Award. You'll be heading down to South Florida in January of next year to accept that award. I mean, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the you know, understatement. You, you, you covered I mean, your expenses driving from Kansas City to Vegas. I, I did. I did. I, could, I think I can afford to drive back there next the next one too. So. Now the good news is you flew flew out here yes. yesterday, and you obviously had a great time. And you were talking to uh, Jose Urias, who Correct. Jose Arias, I should say, who was a champion previous, I believe, in 2018. Mm -hmm. Is there a common bond you kind of maybe had with him, realizing the accomplishment you guys achieved? He, he was the the first time I was there in the first final table i mean i've been twice and and um so the first one i was the final table he was he was there so i remember him so so we you know we remember each other there was some time. recognition yeah. right and um it, it was good um you know you know tossing around some ideas and stuff and, yeah and he's pretty good so i already knew that so i knew when i as i knew who he was before i introduced yeah. you know, you make so a I'm, good point though as a handicapper even though you've achieved the pinnacle of being a horse player you can never stop learning right you exactly. never know talking to somebody exactly some little tidbit that they might put forth that maybe results in a few extra exactly. winners for you that, that is that is true you have to you know because if, you know, if you're not hitting every race obviously you know you need to you know <laughs> you need to learn there's always something you're you're you're, you're you looked at incorrectly possibly well, you mentioned the 2021 NHC poll, and ironically, in this very first race, which you're going to talk about, which is one mile on the turf course for fillies and mares, it's an allowance optional claiming race, non-winners of two other than the rails today are at zero feet, and it also begins the 50-cent early pick five. We've got a field of seven. The morning line favorite was number five, Warren's Candy Girl. The current betting choice is number four, Phenom, at two to one. But Warren's Candy Girl, ironically, who's running today, was a half length away from basically you becoming the 2021 NHC champion, which was Correct. held in August because of that was a COVID year. Correct. This was the last contest race. You played Warren's Candy Girl. Yes, I did. If you had won, or if she had won, I should say, you would have become mathematically the 2021 NHC champ. Right. It was, and and um, and, and Jose Arias was was a couple spots ahead of me. I was third. I think he was first or second. Yep, he was and first. Then, and then someone, you know, from seventh wave, you know, Justin, Justin, yep. Justin you know, you know, it was great. I mean, yeah, that's that was a great call. It's like you know, hats off, you know, to, to the winner. I mean, that's, you know, I was like the his horse that won and and the only people that had a horse to hit the exact was was my horse running second then his winner no one else you know, you know he was, leapfrogged up to the top and yeah, then you finished it, in it the was, third yeah it was a it was a it was a pretty tough race it was a allowance optional state bred 20 mile on the on the turf at del mar is a how, how many yeah 11 in this yeah, yeah it, that's a good pick it was, just came up a little short it, it was a it was an interesting race well you, you know, know plenty about warren's candy girl in this first race Correct. who do you like in race one and why I'm. I went with. Um, I, I want to take the new face. I'm going to go with the seven. Um, never been on the turf, so obviously may not like the turf. That's that's the question mark. And um, you know the second off a of, off a short layoff. And I just thought you know, the the pedigree says that this this horse should like the should like the turf. And um, so I'm thinking, like I say, you're just you're just estimating, you're just guessing, you know. But the price Educated is right. Guess. Twelve to one. You're the getting rewarded right. for the guess. The price is right. That's that's the. That's the thing. And the key is, uh, Paul, that uh, the breeder of Shared Future is Ken and Sarah Ramsey. Typically, they do breed turf runners as well. So that's a tip off that maybe Shared Future will like the turf. We're looking at your picks on the screen. Okay. You also give a little love to the rail filly, Symphony Perfect, ridden by Juan Hernandez. Why'd you like her? It, um, I like um, Hernandez has been riding um, number four and he, and he hops to the one. And um, in this horse, you know, you know, obviously they, the, the owners thought this horse has some class running in some group threes over in, over in Europe and stuff. And um, so obviously they, they thought this horse had some quality and um, you know, sometimes first time in the States, they don't always, always fire, but um, now the second time I'm thinking, you know, they've got the top rider on them. I think you, I think the horse has to, you have to use that one. Seven one in race number one here at Santa Anita. So says Paul Kalia, our seminar guest today, the 2023 NHL. C champ. Let's turn the page, Paul. Take a look at race number two. Begins the 50 cent early pick four. One mile on the main track. Phillies and mares in for a $10,000 claiming tag. Scratch the two. Leaves us with a field of five. Revised morning line favorite is now number one. A broken breeze. Taking a drop, slight drop down in class for trainer Andrew Harris. Give us your thoughts on race two. Yeah, I um I, I like the one. I like broken breeze. It, he um she it shows that um Fry's had some good runs with this horse, and that that's that was basically the what I liked about it. So these this kind of you know horses that you know they take turns beating each other. So it's not the you know it's a 
it's not the easiest race as a handicap, and um, but I, I I landed on the one. And you also like number four, who is Shreve Arbiter. She's got speed as well. She doesn't have much lick as they get close to the wire, but exactly. you think maybe they can go uh, gate to wire with her? I'm I'm thinking that um, he's probably that um, she's going to be in the lead. Or she's going to be close to the, to the pace. She may be able to hold on for you know minor placing and. Um, I have her, you know, 0 for 8 at um, San Anita, so that's a little, little worrisome there. So that's why, you know, I had, had a, couldn't put that horse on top. I got to put him second. So. And yesterday the temperatures were very warm. Today they're warm right. as well, probably mid 80s, which generally is conducive to early speed. Most of the races yesterday, either on the main track or the turf course, were won by the pace setters. Paul, we know you're very proficient and uh, extremely uh, proud of your accomplishments in the NHC tournament circles. But what type of better are you? In other words, you play almost every weekend from a home or going to an OTB. Are you like an exotic? player you straight win better like you know like what what type of player are you I, I'm, I'm a trifecta player that's that's why trifecta and doubles are my my favorite plays i try to find i try to find my my spots in in the card you know and um and then i try to look the race before the race after and i try to fire the doubles that's what i'm looking you try at. and press your opinion hard that's what i try to do and um and um, so that's so that's what, what I'm looking at. And um, like I said, tri trifectas are just I'm better at hitting one race than than hitting five in a row. Sure. You know, so that that's you know. And, and what's play. your strategy playing tries? Do you key a horse? I know a lot of tri players like maybe key in third, and don't even worry about the winner's second place horse. That's obviously a unique talent that they have. They're mm -hmm. very good and successful at it. How do you play tries? <laughs> They're better than me because that'd be hard to <laughs> hard to do. Um, I, I'm normally. I, I try to I try to get it down to just two on top, and um, I, I try to look for races where where um, there's no single horse on top. That that's the kind of race where the, a race where there's a, a single horse on top. I'm not playing either a vulnerable that race. favorite or a wide open uh, race. Right. And I, I'm not you know I'm not putting you know um, you know three to one and a four to one on top. You know I'm usually have a fifteen to one shot and, sure. a, and an eight to one you know stuff like that on top, and maybe throw a you know seven to two in or something like that. Then you know then just pyramid down. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. try to get the the bombs to run on the bottom. You know, why not supers or uh, super high fives? Well, super high fives is a dollar bet, so that that can that can get up. Um, you got a lot of money now. What are you worried about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, I've, I've I've actually hit one super high five at Keelan one time on a DQ, and I thought God, I was so I was so excited. I could, you know I couldn't believe it because the Derby was coming up in a couple of weeks, so I had my money for the Derby, right. and I thought it paid like four or five grand something like that. And I was, but it's that's that is extremely difficult bet to hit. Let's see if we can solve the riddle in race number three. We're sprinting six and a half furlongs on the main track for Calbred Maiden Claimers. Fifty thousand dollars of the claiming tag. We've got a field of six only one five-year-old in the field that's number five whiskey vision the others are three-year-olds including number three apple warrior a first time starter from the john sadler barn two to one on the moor line how do you evaluate these maiden races paul uh, normally normally i would do a i would do a pedigree cre query um and just to see what what kind of um, families they come from. Sure. That's, that's how I uh, made special weights. That's what I'm, I'm looking at. You know, because you can see how much they paid for them if it if it was sold at auction. And um, but I want to look and see what kind of you know what kind of family you know. If I, I, and I'll go back. I go back to you know three. You know the first three four generations right and it's first dam second dam and third dam and um you know i'm looking at you know what you know what kind of parents that they have what kind of horses were they you know the, right. the lean turf the lean sprint the lean long dirt well, you know stuff like that you know it doesn't you know, it's an exact an exact <laughs> science but um that's that's what i look at on main special weights normally so do you think apple warrior the first time starter is basically the horse to beat or do you are you looking elsewhere it, no it looked it looked like i i just kind of defaulted to him because of um you know because of um connections you know, I, I, JJ and, his, and um i know john sadler's not you know the does not the best first time starter number but um i i i just i saw a lot of holes in the in the rest of the, of the field so i kind of want, want to take the new face type thing and um so that's how i landed on him and you like number two reef city ridden by the bug boy trained by jeff bondy one of two in here for mr bondy what'd you like about reef city um i like the way he was i like the way he was he was dropping bunch of weight and um and he was second off a layoff and i think the turn back's going to help that's so those are kind of the kind of the things i was looking at on that horse paul the question i think everybody has on their mind who's watching is you've got nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars a check that's cleared the bank it's now in your possession <laughs> what are your plans for that money i mean are you planning to take any exotic trips uh there's probably some trainers who want to whisper in your ear and see if you want to buy any horses <laughs> what's uh, what's your plan with the money 
I'm definitely going to be playing in, in some some live money contests. So I've I um I've tried parlay your success. I've, I've, I've never I've never done well in them, but it, it, I always enjoy it because you know the Hawthorne throws on a couple. Um, Del Mar as you know, I'm definitely will be in the build on the Del Mar ones and um, the Monmouth one. I haven't decided. I haven't um because it's pretty far pretty far away. So I don't know if I, I'm you not. You can done. fly now. You don't have to I'm drive. Not, <laughs> <laughs> such a habit of just driving, you know, because it's just like you know because because normally I'm playing it in Kentucky, so it's not right. I can get to Kentucky. Right fairly easy so. and you told me yesterday when we met for the first time that you're dabbling in horse ownership i believe you bought this horse before you won the tournament but you, yes. you own a piece of a horse mm -hmm. that's running at a horseshoe indianapolis correct. on wednesday correct is that the only one you own no i, I own a, i'm not, i have a i have a few um, um brood mares um and i'm with uh you know there's like three different groups i've, I've mainly been with and um can i, can I mention who they are? of course absolutely yeah, so um, uptown charlie brown stud uh, so i have some mares um in pennsylvania because pennsylvania has all the the incentives sub, the sub, the yeah. correct and um and dare to dream out of um out of chicago and then and pocket aces and uh so the horse that's running and um horseshoe is um with pocket aces so and they're they're a kentucky one so that's i want because i'm in the midwest i want to be in kentucky and they run the tracks that i want to run at you're a busy man sanding over the weekend <laughs> back to indianapolis on wednesday yes. and of course down to del mar this summer look forward to seeing you down the road race number four sprinting on the turf course six furlongs the distance calbreds non-winners of one other than it's an allowance optional claiming race program scratch of the five leaves us with a field of seven more in line favorite number two in vronsky style just one for ten lifetime four seconds and one third what say you about race four paul I like this four, and I, I like this four a lot. As a matter, this this is oh one boy, I like it a sounds lot. like you're going to uh, open is, up the wallet a little yeah, bit. This is one I will I will be. Um, this is a, this is a horse I like. Here. Will you play a try in a seven horse field? No, no, no. So this is um. So I actually wrote down a daily double here before I can try to try to slam yeah. a, okay. a a double coming so, into this race or going out of this. It's race? It's going to be going out. Okay, of it, so, so we 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 know you like Square Cat. What is it about Square Cat that you like? Um, I, I like the drop. You know, the, the the last two was Open Company. And um, and then the, the race before that was on the dirt, so I'm just tossing that. And um, you go back if you, if you, if um if she runs that race four back, I, I don't think they touch this this animal. Fair enough. And what price would you take in terms of like a double? You'll obviously be able to see that price before right, right. before they break from the gate. But is there is there a minimum that you would take in terms of a double price? I'll, I'll be watching. I'll be watching the probables and because um, I like the I like the favorite in the next in the next race. So it right. has to be you know reasonable. You know, sure. but, you know, just try to play like a you know like a fifty dollars straight or something like that. You know, right. something like that. Right. Fair enough. Number four, Square Cat, one of Paul's uh, best bets on today's card. Race number five begins the twenty cent rainbow pick six, the jackpot single ticket carryover. Now up to fifty five thousand dollars that amount plus whatever is wagered today will be yours if you're the only winning ticket and the fifth race is the first of two stakes races on today's card it's the grade three kona gold stakes hundred thousand dollars guaranteed for sprinters going six and a half furlongs on the main track scratch the two sunrise journey who was part of the speed leaves us with a field of five number four brickyard ride who won this race last year is the six to five morning line favorite second off the layoff juan hernan juan hernan is in the saddle is this your key for the double yeah, I like I like the one. Oh, and, you do? Um, okay, sorry, my bad. Yeah, I like the one and um, anarchist. Yes, and you know the I, I would love to own a horse like this. You know they uh, improving, th you know throw them on the turf and he runs a faster um, figure. I mean that that's been he hasn't won a lot of races, you know. So that's the thing. So I you know I definitely think it's like you know how the crowd's going to play. It's going to be one four. Those are four one. Those are the horses. But um, but um, you know, depending on what the problems are, so I can't play both of them. You know, I have to, I have oh, to take a stand yeah. there. Yeah. You, know? you got to sharpshoot um, it, right? And um, so I, I'm leaning towards the the one, and um, like it does 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 scare me. He hasn't won that many races where you know Brickyard Rides won twelve. You know, so obviously he's an excellent animal, but um. This this one just seems like an up and comer kind of that that's what I'm thinking. I completely agree. Now number three, Armagnac. It's always dangerous when you yes. visit Southern California to discard any Bob Baffert runners. It's an interesting move going from a route to a sprint. Blinkers come off, which obviously didn't work out the last couple of races. Do you give Armagnac any sort of a look? I, I kept I, I kept looking at him because I because I wanted to, I wanted to pick that horse. I just I just couldn't get around the I just couldn't get around the one or the one or the four. So fair enough. Anarchist and number four, Brickyard Ride. So says Paul in race number five, the Kona Gold Stakes. Race number six, we're coming down the hillside turf course. Always a great spectacle to watch. It's for fillies and mares, non-winners of two other than. Also race six begins the 50 cent late pick five. We've got a field of seven, number three, Kitty Katana, who took a bad step last time out for trainer Phil D'Amato as the two to one morning line favorite. Got to be positive that the connections bring back Kitty Katana so quickly off that disappointing effort last time out. What do you think of race six, Paul? I like the five. I like Prince Adelaide and um, never been on turf. So, you know, obviously you're taking a, a you know, a big risk, you know, because there's no proven turf form. 
and um, you know has a lot of speed. And I just think you know, you know, it's going to be in the race right from the get go. Bullet work, a couple back, and you know, I just I, I really. You know, I really think the source is going to looking good. We you know when they hit the hit the top of lane, whether you know she goes on or not. That's that's the question. But you know, a little little turn back. You know, and um, I think there's an I think there's enough turf blood there. I think you know I look. This is when I looked up for pedigree, and um, so it was, it was kind of you know, you know, not you know a ton of turf blood in there. But I thought it, it's you know six and a half. I think the horse can do it. We've talked about a lot, lot, excuse me. We've talked a lot about a lot of different aspects of handicapping so far, Paul. But you really haven't mentioned trainers and the importance you place on the trainers. Are they kind of interchangeable, or do you place extra emphasis on certain trainers when you're handicapping? Yeah, it's you know I w- obviously I take in, take you know, stats into account. You know the trainer stats and things like that. And um, but you know there, there's there's so many factors <laughs> to look at. You know you, so you know, you try to take them all into account and and you know f- you know all the more factors that add up. You know maybe that'll be the one that you can come up with or whatever. But yes, I always I always look at at trainers. You know because obviously some of them are better with um, first time starters and, and things like that. And I'm um, just like you know I. I, I picked two Sadler first time starters and you know just percentage is not very good but you know it was kind of you know a, a process of elimination r- exactly that's how I came up with them the process of elimination race number seven begins the 50 cent late pick four sequence race seven is sprinting six furlongs on the main track for main claiming Phillies and mares in for a $20,000 claiming tag we've got a feel of eight more in line favorite down on the rail who is somewhat of a lifelong maiden <laughs> oh for 14 lifetime but yet three to one on the more line great connection so far during the winter meet Steve Knapp and Tiago Pereira teamed up to in a lot of races vulnerable favorite here i think so and um and, and i do like the way you know um tiago Pereira's been you know, riding excellent yes and because um, i because I, I was looking at I, I wanted to pick a couple of horses that was on it just seemed like there was a, you know i always came up with somebody else but this is another one process of elimination i'm going with the i'm going with the two john because, sadler again first time starter because yeah, it looks like there's just there's just you didn't so see many john goals. at dinner last night or anything did you <laughs> <laughs> no just checking know. to make sure you didn't get any inside info <laughs> What do you like about Gray Magic other than Juan Hernandez is in the saddle? Juan Hernandez is in the saddle. <laughs> That's I mean, I mean, he, you know, he's he's a top, you know, he's just top notch, top class rider. I mean, there's just no way around it. I mean, the guy is just, I mean, he's just, he's just tough. I mean, he's good and he's, you know, wins a lot of races. He wins his share, wins more than his share, and um, and I just I, I really like Juan Hernandez. <laughs> She's four to one on the morning line, Paul. But you like a twelve to one maybe to run second. Rufa Rednot, who adds blinkers for trainer Keith Cragmo. What'd you like about her? Um, I liked I liked that that um, it was um, it was it was second off, and I thought I, I just thought there there would be has a ton of speed. So I figured you know this could be one of those you know you know it could be a wire job maybe on that that horse. That's why I thought you know throw throw her in there and um they got bleakers on so you know i think if she breaks running you know she's already shown that she can show speed down at at churchill and um you know almost wired a wired a group you know um a few races back so that's that's kind of speed play basically you talked about pedigree and in terms of evaluating maidens paul what about maybe either looking at workouts getting workout reports do you spend any do you place any emphasis i should say on on the either the workout times the spacing of the workouts particularly for either layoff runners or first-time starters Yes, I definitely look definitely look at workouts. Um, uh, you know, I want to see the different trainers use different spacings on their workout. You know, usually it's seven days, but some of them will, will do a little bit different, maybe nine or whatever. So, you know, just from experience, you know that. So I'm looking for, you know, I'm looking for. Tra- it doesn't have to be, you know, fast times because it depends on what the trainer is, is wanting to do with the with the with the. I'm just looking for the steady. That that's why you know. So I know that they're they're you know they're good. They're they've been working. They're they're fit. And they should. That's you know. So I'm looking at the steady work pattern. Race number eight, we're spreading six and a half furlongs on the flat turf course. This race is for Phillies and Mares, a, lot, a starter optional claiming types, I should say. We've got a good field of nine. More in line favorite number three, Topolina from the Doug O'Neill Barn. Three to one, one of his go-to riders, Edwin Maldonado, in the saddle. What are your thoughts on race eight, Paul? Two is one of the horses I like a lot today. Good boo-ju. Yes, I like good boo-ju. Um, it's just, you know, I, I like the way, I, I like the... I like the rider change. That's that's one of the, the obviously I'm looking at speed figures too, but one of the things is uh, you know, you go back one, two, three, four, four back, same rider, you know, wins by open lengths, you know, at the at the distance, you know, at the course, you know, it's like I, I just think it's all systems go here on this too. You like good buju. Now how will you play at the windows good buju? Will you do another double? Will you play a try in this race since we got nine runners? Um 
the um see the see the thing is that so the funded is in the next race so, so you know every that's gonna be the lowest doubles with every single horse you know zero so, value so it's gonna be extremely tough so I'd, I'd probably you know to the end the first time started the race before you know what i mean so i would be looking at just to play this horse straight up you mm -hmm. know just win win place you know sure fair play, enough okay and you also give a little love to number one aventap who comes out of a common race that many of these came out of what is it about aventap that you like from the mark latbarn I, I like I like the um, I like their drop in weight and um, that that's and the, it looks like it, lo it looks like the horse could be improving that I, I think you know so you got the, the drop in weight and it looks like he's improving and um, that's the that's what I like about him. Now that's a little bit of an old school handicapping angle. You've talked about weight a couple times now yes. during the seminar. You do pay attention to yes. weight and and what's your philosophy behind weight? I'm, um, you know, uh, obviously they're they're carrying less weight. Um, you know, normally the they're carrying less weight because they have an apprentice on them. You know, and um, so that's that's the reason why they're carrying less weight. Good news and bad news. But right, and but a lot of times when you see those those European horses coming over, you know, you'll yes. see they'll carry they'll be carrying one thirty two, right, and then they're carrying one eighteen in their first time lacing something. And you know, I'm you know I'm using <laughs> using sure. this horse, you know, particularly but, at a good price. Exactly. So that, that that's usually the the weight is the is for me is more of the shipping from the Europe. That's that's mm -hmm. why. I'm looking at the at the weight because they carry a lot more weight over there than, than we, we do over here so two, two and one in race number eight let's take a look at race number nine our second stakes race on the card it's the grade two californian stakes two hundred thousand dollars guarantee it's also the prep race for the gold cup which will be run next month here at sanita also race nine begins the one dollar golden hour pick four linking our last two races here with the last two races at golden gate yesterday's payout just shy of a thousand dollars for a one dollar wager we kick things off here in race number nine with a field of six and as paul mentioned number one to fund it is four to five on the Moy line, in my opinion, likely to go lower. Drops from a mile and a quarter to a mile and an eighth. This is a tough horse to beat, at least on paper. And that's that's how it looks to me. And um, you know, full disclosure, I was on this horse last the last two races. I I, I loved uh, I loved in the last race, and you know, that's the way it goes. But um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those were both before you got nine hundred fifty thousand dollars in your pocket. <laughs> right. So I, I I thought I kept trying to to get around them. I, I just couldn't I, I couldn't find a way to get around this this horse. How would you play the race, Paul? In other words, we know maybe you'd play some doubles coming into it, although that's not likely. You talked about how you don't play all the races. Are there races where you'll just basically sit it out and maybe go grab a hot dog yes. or um, you know take yes. a look at another racetrack? Yes. See, I think when you're when you're um, when you're a vertical player, you you have to do that. Okay, so when, when you're when you're horizontal, obviously this race is going to be in the pick six. It's in the pick five. It's in the pick four. Okay, so you have to use this race, and um, you know I'd be single in the one. <laughs> if I was playing, if me and my friends were, were splitting a bet or whatever, then I would I would say we're gonna, we're gonna single this one, sure. and then we can throw our, our our bombs in the other races, you know, because right. so, you're going to have to get one or or you know to get a, a good payout. Right. Do you play harness races or no. greyhound races no. or I, I high lie? I mean, are you like a I, degenerate gambler or just a, just thoroughbred? Well, I think I'm a degenerate, but maybe, maybe not a degenerate gambler. <laughs> but I used to I used to um, I used to play the, the dogs. That was it's like I'm a trifecta player. Dog racing is like perfect. And that's how it became. I think it became a trifecta player. You kind of sharpened your skills. That, that's the bet because I I had I, I knew professional gamblers and um and that's is there the a bet, track near the Kansas City play. that was a dog track? Yeah, Woodlands. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's it's closed now. Sure. So I knew that the so the professionals would come in um, when the season first opened to take all the newbies' money, all the all the yeah, you know, all the novices. Oh, right. They, they, they would just be taking all their money. Sure. And um, but um, but all they played was trifectas. Based, I'd say ninety something percent of their play, and I'm you know I'm talking you know ten grand trifectas right. and just wheels and wheels and wheels. And that's where I learned how to be a trifecta player. Very interesting. Race number ten closes out the day, but doesn't close out the week. Keep in mind tomorrow we have live racing here at Sandy to another ten race card which starts at one o'clock but first things first race 10 we're spreading six and a half furlongs in the flat turf course for maiden special weights also race 10 begins the five dollar golden hour daily double linking our last race here with the last race at golden gate scratch the also eligible number 13 yogi boy will not compete also take note number two o'banion is a first time gelling also adding lasix also invading from ireland the lukewarm morning line favorites number six acquired class who is putting blinkers on four to one on the morning line indicating at least to me that this is a very wide open race i'm guessing it looks like a wide open race to you paul exactly i think i think there's um there's multiple different ways you could go here and um you know i'd say i landed on the the six but um but i, I just thought um i i looked into the pedigrees of the of the of the two irish bred horses and i nothing really i thought you know it's just you know you know nothing that stood out to me to to use them and um 
and so I so I landed on on six, and um, I threw in this um this 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 bomb on the rail as my second pick. So, R- what is it about number one, Road of Love, that you like? Um, you know, some horses just aren't aren't precocious as, as two year olds. Okay, and the, sometimes you can catch some great prices on horse like this. Um, the bottom of the pedigree is turf. You know, the quality road. You know, you know, but um, but the bottom is all it's all grass. And um, you know, broke slow both first races, laid laid them off. And now first time Lasix with the bug boy, but you know, break it slow from the rail, break slow again. You know, that, that horse is done. You know, you'll know early. You know, we know you don't love number one road of love, but I'm sure you love the 20 to one morning line odds. Would yeah. you consider making a win bet on road of love? Yes. Would you consider playing a trifecta? This is a trifecta. This, this is the race where I'm looking at a trifecta. This is the race I'd be looking at a trifecta. And so you'd pyramid it. So obviously right. you'd probably use one and six right. on top. Exactly. And, and then how deep back. would you go in second and third? Just just arbitrarily speaking. I, I'd go like I'd go like um, I'd go like two four or two five, um, then two and would five you go six deeper? right seven something like that. Sure. So so two five seven something like that. And then press it. Yeah. <laughs> and try to, and then you know, then maybe reverse, reverse the six and one down to the of second course. line. You know, would you and, even go to third? And, then, and um, sometimes I do, but generally no, I don't. Right. Yeah, because I mean, I figure if I can't pick a horse to hit the exact, I mean, I don't, I don't deserve to hit the trifecta. You know? We know he can pick winners, that's for sure. Sanita celebrates winners, and it's been a pleasure having Paul Kalia here today as our seminar guest. Paul, thanks so much for your time. Really enjoy having you here this weekend as our guest. It's going to be a fun weekend. Congratulations on your success in Thank Las you. Vegas. Do it again in the BCBC and also at next year's <laughs> NHC, and make sure <laughs> we give hard. a very popular speech at the Eclipse Awards representing <laughs> all horse players. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, great place. Thanks to all of you for watching as well. It is the great race place. It's called that for a reason. Paul Kalia is living proof of that. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you have a great day handicapping. Pick some winners, and we'll see you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast and the turf course firm with the rail on the turf at zero feet. Here are the changes. There are no changes in the first race. Started the early pick five. In the second, scratch number two, Bonita Leona. Morning line odds maker John White has issued a revised morning line for race two. In the third, number two, Reef City carries two pounds over. Fourth race, program scratch at number five, Rock and Ride. The fifth starts the Rainbow Pick Six. There's about $56,000 in the carryover for a single ticket winner. Scratch number two, Sunrise Journey. The fifth is the grade three, Kona Gold Stakes. The six starts to late pick five with no changes. In the seventh, overweights, four midnight Susie, two over, five tenacious lady, three pounds over. No changes in race eight. The ninth is the grade two Californian stakes and beginning of the golden hour pick four, no changes. And in the 10th, beginning of the golden hour double, number one, Road of Love, two over, five, Neon Lights, two over, and seven, Bolt Supremacy, two pounds over. Scratch the also eligible, number 13, Yogi Boy. Enjoy your afternoon at the Great Race Place. Post time for the first. Start of the early pick five in 26 minutes at 1 p.m.